this is Neumeyer here, and we are going to go through our unit on orchestra and composers. So it's a six-week unit, and we're going to start off with giving you an overview of the timeline and talk about the timeline that we are going to be covering this cycle. So we're going to be looking at the 19th and 20th century, and those different, they actually cover two different periods of music. Now, we have some timeline cards that will help us out with this. One of them is the Romantic period of the arts, which will be the first period that we're going to be talking about. And then the Modern period of the arts, we're going to be talking about the early period of the 20th century there. So to help us with that, I like to look at a timeline because I'm a, a visual person, so I like to see how that all looks here. Um, all right, so this is a timeline of musical history. Let me get it there so you can see it. And this starts here with the Baroque period. That started in the 16, around 1650, and then it goes this direction and then continues on down here. And so we had the, from 1650 to about 1750 AD was the Baroque period. And then there was the Classical period from 1750 to about the um, 1820s. After that started the Romantic period. Now that is the period we're gonna be covering during this cycle. We did some of it in cycle two and now we're gonna continue with the late Romantic period and moving into the modern period which began in the 1900s. Now, I don't know if you can see it on here. I have some, all these little pencil marks all over the place because what's really fascinating is to look at what else happened during that period. There's events in world history, there's events in literature and art, and it's really cool to see how what was happening in the world how it influenced music and how music influenced what was happening in the world. And so it's like vice versa. Also literature, poetry, plays, and the art that was um, done during those times influenced each other as well. So let's start with talking about the Romantic period. So the period of time that covers was around 1827 to the early 1900s. Now, things that happened during this period um, were the American Civil War, there was lots of inventions, we're kind of during the Industrial Revolution happening there. Prior to that, in the, during the Classical period, um, things that kind of helped influence the Romantic period even starting were the, uh, the uh, French Revolution, that uh, when Napoleon was having all the wars over in Europe, um, and those sorts of things. Also in the United States, what was happening, just as a side note, was the, like the Louisiana Purchase and the Lewis and Clark Expedition. All that was happening during the classical period. And now we're moving into the early 1800s all the way through the uh, up to 1900 for the Romantic period. One thing that we can look at is, here's a, a really cool book, The Osborne Story of Music. And it shows us some of the things that were happening during this romantic period. There was lots of waltzes. Um, the composers at that time were starting, they're using some of the classical music that had been established prior to them, but then they started adding some things to it. And we'll talk about that in just a second. And also ballets were something that had a huge influence on the musical uh, pieces that were developed during this romantic period and then moving into the modern period. I want to read you a bit from a book here about this romantic period. So this is a really cool book I got from the library. It's actually really big. Um, it says it's the concise history of Western music. Um, I don't know. I don't know if concise is the right title because it's quite a bit. But there's a, it talks about the different music and how art and music and what was happening at the time influenced one another. Now here's what it says about the Romantic period. I thought I'd just read you a little bit from it because it helps explain what was going on during the Romantic period really well. So the word Romantic is derived from the medieval romance 
a narrative in verse or prose about the adventures of heroic figures such as King Arthur or his knights, often which took place in mysterious or exotic settings. It connected something distant, legendary, and fantastic, an imaginary or ideal world from far from, every, far from everyday reality. In the 19th century, especially in German-speaking lands, the term was applied first to literature, then to music and art. So we're starting, starting to uh, explore this idea in the Romantic period of their inspiration coming from a variety of different things. And so you can imagine with all the um, things that were happening in the political unrest of the Napoleon Wars and different things, different turmoil, they want to escape a little bit of this reality and start feeling their, their emotions through music and art, um, their imagination. Um, they wanted to express that in their music. And also what was happening at that time was composers started working um, and, and artists started doing things that they wanted to do, not just what they were being paid to do or what they were being asked to do. And that was part of how society was changing at that time. And so they were starting to be innovators. There were innovators, there was inventions happening, and the, the music of the time was expressing this as well. In addition, with the political unrest at the time, there, there was this idea of um, some patriotism where there was nat national pride where they wanted to express um, their love for their country and where they were from. And so they did that instead of um, always adopting the music from Western Europe, uh, artists that we'll look at today, our composer we'll look at today, Tchaikovsky, he was a Russian composer. And so he wanted to reflect some of the Russian music of his time and start developing some music that would be um, of, of his own area and not just always having to listen to the music that was developed in other parts of Europe. So it's really cool when you look at history and how everything influences each other, right? Now, we talked a little bit about some of their inspiration. So a lot of it was their feelings and their emotions and, and the fairy tales and the fables and um, nature was also something that they reflected. And I wanted to show you just a picture that kind of represents this. So here's a picture from the romantic period um, of the deer and nature. So in art and in music, this was being reflected and expressed in what they were make creating at the time. One composer we're going to be looking at that was during this romantic period is Tchaikovsky. Now he lived during um, 1833 to 1897, and if you remember what was happening in the United States at that time, um, during his lifetime was the American Civil War. Just an interesting um, thing to think about what was else was happening in the world during the time of his life. But he wrote a lot of music, specifically he wrote some very familiar pieces that we'll be familiar with, including um, ballets. Um, Swan Lake and what you probably are most familiar with is um, the Nutcracker. And so he was a Russian composer and like I said he um, wanted to incorporate some of the classical music that we had become that they had been um, inspired by but also incorporating some of the Russian music of his time, the national music that he would be able to um, incorporate into his music and he in, in, in fact wrote one of his pieces was a, um, a a piece that was kind of celebrating Russia's victory over Napoleon. Um, so there was lots of different things that influenced him um, but during the Romantic period as we talked about very emotive lots of emotion expressed in his music and I just wanted to play you a clip we'll be listening to more of it when we study him specifically but just so you can kind of hear what this emotion that we're talking about during the Romantic period sounds like. Very beautiful, but very almost a sad feeling comes out of this song, right? Very emotive. We'll go through it a little bit more in our next um, session together. 
Now, as we move on in time, um, as we get through this late romantic period and start moving into the modern period, um, different things were happening. Now in the uh, visual arts, uh, where we are familiar with the paintings such as the Impressionists, we have Monet, Degas, some of those Impressionists, that was happening right at, during this Romantic period, towards the late of Romantic period, um, as far as music is concerned. And let me show you just a picture um, by Monet, um, where we get the word Impressionistic, um, Impressionism, um, where Monet would uh, paint his impression of things where it would sh it wouldn't be the exact thing but the colors and the way he um, painted it would show us an impression of what he was seeing and some musicians in started incorporating that during their music as well and the first one we'll get to is WC um, now I remember how to say his name um, it's like the the letters W and C WC <laughs> Here. Now, as we move into the modern period, now that's moving into the early 20th century is what we're going to be cover covering. So the turn of the century of the 1900s. Now, lots of things were happening during this time as a very... Uh, uh, the changing time. There was a renewed sense of energy. Um, some new things were being innovated, inventions, um, like I mentioned. There was the invention of radio and film and music recording was start is starting to be recorded in new ways then. Um, and so there was some new ways of making music. They wanted to challenge the ways that had been um, done before and so they started introducing some new um, rhythms that were different and unusual sounds they would start incorporating into their music um, and this is a time where they they weren't so concerned of aiming to please but rather they wanted to challenge some of the perceptions and um, kind of leaving their rules behind they, they didn't want to be too rigid like it had been in the past but it was almost sort of a, a rebellious sort of challenging sort of thing that the, the music would challenge their audiences to rethink things kind of like the impressions that were given in the impressionist um, paintings imagine that kind of starting to happen in music now and we start with Debussy he was very influential in this he was kind of the early pioneer of starting this music um, and uh, things the further music would be changed um, and influenced by him um, his friends and um, were a lot of the artists, the painters, the impressionist painters he was friends with and some poets and things like that were very influential in his music. And so he wanted to create musical images much like the impressionists were creating in their paintings. And so he used new ways of using scales, um, harmonies, chords. Um, he experimented with some of the basics where we're used to kind of a eight um, they were using an eight note octave scale that we're familiar with where it's like goes up one, one octave goes say, say the uh, C to C the eight notes in between he started experimenting with a five note scale where he would use the uh, black keys as the five notes in his five note scale and so it sounded a lot different he used it he started using some repeating with some small differences anyway so there was a lot going on here um, as he started influencing the music in the modern period let me let you hear a little bit about it uh, a little bit of his um, one of his songs we're going to be studying in this um, unit Okay, so we'll listen to more of that song later in one of our, our later sessions. And as we move into the early 1900s, we start to see um, turmoil in the world again. We're about to enter into World War I, and the music of the time 
reflected some of this turmoil and some of the musicians were you know uh, if reflecting this um, uh, feeling at the time. The third composer we're going to look at in our unit is Stravinsky. Now he was also an, a Russian composer and he came uh, about during the modern period and he was really influential. Now his music really set the tone for what was going to happen for the rest of the modern period and um, most most artists will say they were influenced by his music. It was really changed changed the way music was done. Um, here's I'll show you from this book again, um, the modern period. So he did uh, music that would go to uh, the ballets, but they were very modern ballets that reflected new sounds and new ways of dancing to those sounds. He was a, a, a Russian artist, like I said, but it was to going. The World War One was happening during this time. He had moved to Paris, and then he had to move to Switzerland during the war. And lots of the music kind of reflects the the the, the, the turmoil that was happening at the time um, during this. So during our, our timeline here, we're in the early 1900s. So it's very early of the modern period. Now. They called Stravinsky kind of the Picasso of his time. Um, like what Picasso did for art, um, Stravinsky did for music. Let me show you a piece um, of art from Picasso. Now remember, he was the one that introduced us to uh, cubism and abstract art. Uh, he kind of led the way there. And in the same sense, um, Stravinsky introduced us to these new rhythmic sounds and different clashes um, that we were that the audience was not used to at the time and really kind of set the pace for a brand new way of doing music. The choreography was new during that time. Um, here I'll just show you a picture. This is a modern picture, but kind of showing you the difference in some of the, the costumes, the choreography, and the rhythms that were going on at that time and influenced music as, he, as Stravinsky um, wrote the music for these new ballets and this new modern dance that would be happening at the time. I'll play you a little bit of the music and what that sounded like. We'll listen to more of it when we study him in a couple weeks. So, as we as you can see, the the Romantic period, moving into the modern period, lots of things going on there, lots of different parts of art and history influencing one another. And now the next three weeks, we'll go through each one of those um, composers that I introduced to you and we'll look at their music, we'll listen to their music and um, talk about them a little bit more. The book we're going to be using for this unit is Classical Music for Dummies. And here you can find each one of the composers that we'll be going through during our unit. In addition to the music, there'll be um, links where you can find each one of the pieces that we'll be listening to as we go through um, each of the composers. All right, well, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.